Bengals playoff push begins now. Mike Petralia inside Paycor Stadium. We're here on Sunday Night Football. The 12-4 and Bengals play host to the 10-7 and Baltimore Ravens. Bengals will have to be concerned about a couple of players that were not on the field last week for the Baltimore Ravens, namely on offense, tight end Mark Andrews and running back J.K. Dobbins. The guy that you really want to focus in on, though, is number 89, Mark Andrews. He had eight catches on 10 targets for 89 yards and a red zone touchdown reception in the Week 5, 1917 Ravens victory. In that game, of course, though, the Ravens had Lamar Jackson. They will not have him tonight. It will be Tyler Huntley, the third different quarterback that the Bengals will be facing when they face the Ravens for a third time here tonight at Paycor Stadium. J.K. Dobbins is somebody, of course, that the Bengals will have to be concerned about as the Ravens will try to shorten this game, shorten the number and limit the number of possessions that the Bengals offense has in this contest. John Harbaugh knows full well his offense cannot keep track and keep up to speed with the Bengals if the Bengals are going uh, at full speed in this contest offensively. So John Harbaugh will use the short game, use the running game, use the short passing game to try and limit the possessions for the Bengals in this game. Obviously, uh, the game being played here in Cincinnati, that is something that John Harbaugh has to take into account as well. Defensive side of the ball, uh, Bengals and Joe Burrow will want to watch out for Marcus Peters. He did not play last week. He will play this week uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. He is a weapon that the Ravens will have to try and limit T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, and hey, let's not forget about Hayden Hurst. He is a weapon that the Bengals certainly could use to go vertical in this game if the Ravens decide to try and double-double uh, the Bengals wide receivers or use some type of exotic defensive look to try and limit the production of T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. Bengals probably in this game would be wise to go to Hayden Hurst early and often. That was the case against the Buffalo Bills before that game obviously was canceled with the issue and the collapse of DeMar Hamlin. But we could see a lot of Hayden Hurst tonight against his former Baltimore teammates. The Bengals in this game obviously want to repeat a lot of what they were able to do last week. They were able to jump out to that 17 to nothing lead. This Ravens team is not one built to erase double uh, digit deficits and so they will want to maintain control of this game early jump out to a big lead and really look to step on the gas uh, against a Ravens team that doesn't have a lot of offensive weapons at their disposal certainly not without Lamar Jackson who will miss this game as he did last week in the last several weeks of the regular season the weather in this game should not be too much of a factor for January 15th it is going to be downright pleasant it won't be windy. It will be chilly when this game kicks off, 27 to 28 degrees. No precipitation is expected for this contest. The wind will not be a factor. So that is good news, uh, for presumably, for Joe Burrow and the Bengals' offense. So no precipitation is in the forecast. The Bengals' defense will want to look and create and continue a trend that started a couple of weeks ago, late in the regular season, of punching the ball away and giving their offense extra pos uh, possessions in the game. They, the Bengals have 10 turnovers, have created 10 turnovers in their last four games, and they'll want to continue that trend tonight against Tyler Huntley and the Baltimore Ravens offense. Obviously, another key aspect to watch if you're a Bengals fan is how does Max Sharping do at right guard? Alex Kappa is out of this game after having his left ankle rolled up on last week against the Ravens. Sharping is no stranger to playoff football. In 2019, as a rookie, he started two games for the Houston Texans, won a victory over the Buffalo Bills in overtime, and then, of course, he was the right guard for that uh, remarkable come from behind 51-31 victory by Kansas City. That was a game that the uh, Texans jumped out to a 24-0 lead in Kansas City but could not hold on to the lead. Sharping, by the way, said this week in the locker room telling, telling us that he actually thought he played pretty well in those two playoff games. Feels comfortable coming into this game, but Max Sharping is certainly somebody to keep an eye on 
Want to watch his communication with center Ted Karras and also right tackle Hakeem Adeniji in this game. How he communicates, how he shows his protections will be vital to giving Joe Burrow enough time to get the ball downfield against the Ravens secondary. We'll have you covered all game long on Twitter at Trags, T-R-A-G-S, pregame, in-game, postgame. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for that. Follow us on clnsmedia.com. And, of course, subscribe and uh, click on the link below on the YouTube Jungle Roar podcast page. We want to hear all your comments, good, bad, and indifferent. And we'll have all of the post-game locker room reaction up on that YouTube page as soon as the game ends. Inside Paycor Stadium, I'm Mike Petralia, CLNS Media.